Hello, this episode of the podcast is sponsored by italki. And uh, one thing that we all know is that uh, if you don't use it, you lose it, which basically means that if you're not actually using your English, if you're not speaking, if you're not talking to people, actually engaging in communication, in con- in conversation, that's the word I'm looking for. If you're not actually engaging in conversation, then you don't really make proper progress. It's all good sort of doing exercises and regularly listening. That's very important. But really, you've got to activate your English. And you can I, you can use italki to do that uh, because basically they will put you in touch with a teacher or a language partner or a community tutor who you can talk to on a regular basis from the comfort of your own home. With this technology, it's now much easier to actually get that speaking time into your into your life. So check it out. And remember that if you buy some lessons, italki will send you a voucher worth about $10. Uh, so it's worth it. Have a look. Go to teacherluke.co.uk slash talk uh, or click an italki logo on my website. You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello, welcome back to Luke's English Podcast, this podcast for learners of English, hosted by me, Luke Thompson. Hello. The general idea of this podcast is to help you to improve your English by providing you with content to keep you listening regularly for longer periods of time to authentic English as it really is spoken. Sometimes I teach you things on the podcast and at other times I play conversations for you to follow, like in this episode. This one is entitled 36 Questions That Lead to Love. 36 Questions That Lead to Love. And in this one, you're going to hear the tangential trio of Amber, Paul and me talking about this set of 36 questions which was compiled by a group of psychologists as part of a study into interpersonal closeness or intimacy between people. Um, Amber first found out about this in a podcast published by the New York Times. And here is what the New York Times website says about this study, which is where the 36 questions come from. So this is what the New York Times says. The study by psychologist Arthur Aaron and others explores whether intimacy between two strangers can be accelerated by having them ask each other a specific series of personal questions. The 36 questions in the study are broken up into three sets, with each set intended to be more probing than the previous one. The idea is that mutual vulnerability helps to create closeness and intimacy. To quote the study's authors, one key pattern associated with the development of a close relationship among peers is sustained, escalating, reciprocal and personal self-disclosure. Allowing oneself to be vulnerable with another person can be exceedingly difficult, so this exercise forces the issue. Do I need to explain any of that language? Let's see. Intimacy, I think you know what that means. That's like personal personal closeness between people. And apparently intimacy can be accelerated. It can be sped up by uh, having people ask a specific series of personal questions, which were designed by these psychologists, the 36 questions. They're broken up into three sets. Set one, set two, set three. Each set is intended to be more probing than the previous one. If something is probing, it means it kind of goes deep into something. Like, for example, a space probe probes space. It goes all the way out into deep space and finds information. Uh, A probing question is a question that goes deep into an issue or deep into someone's personal feelings or something. So each set of questions is designed to be more probing than the previous one. And the idea is that mutual vulnerability helps to create intimacy. Vulnerability. If you're vulnerable, it means you're exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed, either physically or emotionally. So it's essentially, if you're vulnerable, it means you've got no defences, let's say. Okay, so uh, vulnerable means uh, no defences. So vulnerability is the noun of vulnerable, the adjective. So the idea is that mutual vulnerability, that's where both people uh, drop their defences, that this helps to create intimacy. And the authors said that one key pattern associated with the development of a close relationship among peers, as people... 
uh, in the same social group, probably of the same age. One key development of a close relationship among people is sustained, so something that lasts a long time, escalating, that means it gets higher and higher and higher, reciprocal, that means both people do it, not just one person, and personal, we understand that one, self-disclosure. Self-disclosure, that's when you uh, show uh, things about yourself that were previously hidden. So the idea is that the more stuff you show about your personal life, the more uh, feelings and thoughts and things that you show over a longer period of time and they get more and more personal and if the other person is doing it too that's a key pattern associated with the development of a close relationship it's like when you get together with someone for the first time a girlfriend or boyfriend you start to disclose things about about yourself and so does uh, the other person and this kind of you know is a mutual thing and it gets um, like higher and higher with more and more disclosure going on until you reach a point where you've got like total intimacy with each each other and that's kind of like the key to developing uh, a close relationship is that you're basically sort of revealing things about yourselves and that's often the most fun part of a relationship in like the early days when you're you're kind of exploring uh what the other person is really like and talking about your innermost feelings and things it's a key part of developing a close relationship and allowing yourself to be vulnerable with another person can be difficult So this exercise is supposed to help, basically. So the questions are now used to help build intimacy or personal closeness, typically between couples that want to fall in love, but also between anyone looking for ways to find out more uh, about each other and to develop a closer or deeper relationship. Amber's going to tell you more about it in a moment. Um, These 36 questions are available for you to use or read online at uh, newyorktimes.com. You'll find a link on the page for this episode. So in this episode, you're going to hear Amber, Paul and me asking each other those 36 questions. And let's see what happens. What do you think is going to happen? Will the questions bring us closer together? To what extent will the intimacy level between us rise? Will these questions make us fall in love with each other? Or will we just learn weird truths about each other that we didn't know before that will disturb us, ultimately causing us to drift apart as friends, and then Amber and Paul will never appear on this podcast again. So, you know, will it, will we get closer or will it somehow push us further apart? Will these questions help you to get to know us more? And what could be revealed by this set of questions designed by psychologists to become more and more intimate as they go? And is it possible for three British friends to take the whole thing seriously enough for the questions to have the intended effect. Well, you can now listen on to find out more, and here we go. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on another podcast. Paul's a very funny boy. His laugh I very much enjoy. Amber's got a lovely voice. If I could choose an accent, hers will be my choice. Yeah. Okie dokie. Amber. Yes. 36 questions that lead to love. Yeah. What's all that about then? Well, I was listening to a podcast, Modern Love, which is run by the New York Times, I think. And um, this woman was talking, was on there talking about the 36 questions which lead to love. And it was this experiment done by a scientist about, you know, could anyone fall in love or, you know, with certain you know a bit of interest could you love someone and he creates these 36 questions that you're meant to ask these people and then at the end you fall in love right there's so it's a series of questions that are designed to help people fall in love with each other or to try and create intimacy okay do you agree with that do you think that um you can just fall in love with anyone if if for example you have the right social interaction that you will fall in love with anyone no so you don't you fundamentally disagree with the, I don't the think hypothesis in, of the the project. I don't think you can fall in love with anyone, but I think well certainly how she did it. So she goes on a date with someone. So they're obviously interested in each other enough to go on a date. Right. And then she does the thirty six questions and they do end up getting together and having a nice relationship. So I think if you are interested in someone um and you perhaps do the thirty six questions, it could be a good way of seeing if you're compatible. Yeah. I think the idea of it was more like, here's 36 questions you need to ask on your first date. And if you, 
if you still like the person and you still get on afterwards, then it could be great. Oh right, I thought but it... if the, if 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 they answer some weird things and whatever, then it's time. It's I think it's one of those. That's what I took from it when what? I when I read it. I think I read it two years ago, uh, yeah. and I was like, oh, this is interesting. I'll do it with a friend, and we did it as a we did it with a, with a friend, and it was it like it worked out really well. It's like okay, there's no it's no. Uh, surprised that we're good friends but I think it's not like it doesn't mean if you answer these together you will definitely fall in love alright so you didn't fall in love with your friends no. you're like uh, after the 36 questions so that was nice but anyway uh, do you fancy going for a drink <laughs> <laughs> we were already out for a drink oh okay yeah but anyway so it's kind of designed like the 36 questions you know you could do this with someone that you're thinking about maybe getting together with or like just going yeah. out on some dates or with someone you've been with for a very long time yeah. about just kind of refinding the intimacy, perhaps asking questions that you've not asked before or not thought to ask for a long time. Could these questions be used in a non-romantic context? I think so. So what's the thing, what's the, the, the point here then? Uh, are they, are they spe- specially worded questions? Are they all about love and romance? Well, I think we should try them. And then we'd find out. But what, oh. what if we all fall in what love with each other? We might fall in love with what each if, other. We already love each other, don't we? <laughs> but I think it's about, because love is about friendship and intimacy. So, you know, the closer, you, your best friends, the friends you've known the longest, you, you know, you've shared those sort of very intimate moments with yeah. them. So Unfor- you sort of, there's... Un- unfortunately, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but like, you, you know, you love them. So there's a different, mm. there's all different kinds of love. I think you can still have a... A platonic kind of love. A platonic love. love. Okay. We're going to find out. If we do the 36 questions, we might fall you, in love. Can you just tell me, though, what the 36 Wedding questions course. are, uh, what, what kind of questions are they? I mean, we're going to find out in a minute because we're going to do them. But, uh, I what? mean, do you know any anything about, like, the, the, the psychological... I think they, they increase in intimacy. So, sort of like a sort of first level question, like, or oh, what do you think about this? Or, you know, describe something you might like, like a nice day. And then they get more, you know, perhaps a, a, a difficult memory. You know, they kind of go down into the depth. So they start light and then they get down. Is this going to be publishable stuff? I mean, it, it, I when we get to like the, the, <laughs> the, the, the end questions, they're not going to be like, what are, you, what are your bank details? Or <laughs> They might be. Well, I think, if them, I think some of them we might not want to share with, the, with each other. All the Lepsters, we could skip them. Okay. Yeah, well, so let's we, just go yeah, through them. We have the right to skip. I'm on okay. question number one. So we've all got questions on our phones. There are 36 of them. Um, I don't know if we're going to get through them all. We might skip some. We'll see. But anyway, we're going to just play around by asking each other some of these questions that were written by uh, a psychiatrist or psychologist or something. Uh, and they're designed to increase uh, intimacy between uh, between couples in order to try and you know uh, bring people close together and ultimately to help mm. people fall in love with each other it says 36 questions on the way to love grab a partner friend lover or stranger and get ready to get intimate okay then or a lepster right so you can find these by uh, you'll there'll be a link on the page for this episode you can find all the questions i imagine that all the questions go in the same order so, so we yeah. can just yeah. we all click start and we're we're here we are yeah um so let's take it in turns paul do you want to Ask the first question. Yeah, why not? Given the choice of anyone in the world, whom? Whom? <laughs> whom? whom? You're going to have to listen to the previous episode for that one. Uh, whom would you want as a dinner guest? <sighs> so you can choose anyone to come to dinner. It's this old question. Yeah. I've heard this one before. Yeah. I could choose anyone in the world. Now, what about... Alive or dead? What about if I said... Um, like My answer to this question would be, obviously, I would invite my wife. Now, that would kill a potential love interest stone dead, wouldn't it? <laughs> if, yeah, don't, don't say if that. I was on a date with a girl. She was like, oh, you know, I thought we'd do the 36 questions. I think it'd be a really nice way to like get intimate. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah, all right then. First question, who would you like to take on an ideal dinner date? Oh, well, my wife, obviously. What? <laughs> You're married. You never said that. <laughs> At least it gets that problem out of the way for you. It does. I've just wanted to let you know I'm I am married. I'm already taken. But I, yeah, I'd, obviously I'd take my wife. But other than my wife, other I than could your take wife, someone else. Um, uh, and if and uh, oh, alive or dead? Uh, let's say alive. Let's say alive. Uh, I don't know. Oh, alive. David, okay. David Crystal would be quite a good person because I could who's ask. He? He's the guy. Who's he? I told you about him like not ten minutes ago. He's the 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 famous. Uh, oh, the linguist. Linguist. The guy who knows everything there is to know about language. Okay. I might have him and I can just ask him all those questions that I have mm. about, you know, are we better at communicating now than we used to be or not? Um, I'd say Professor David Crystal. That's my English teacher uh, choice. Okay. okay. What about you, Good Amber? choice. Um, I, 
God, you know, I feel like I, I don't know, but I, I God. was reading. God, I'd take God. No, I was reading an article not long ago by, I can't say his name, George Monbier? Morbier? I don't know. And he writes about the environment and he is really interesting. I, I'd be interested to have him over for dinner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I would go uh, with Elon Musk, the uh, Tesla CEO, because I think he's got some crazy cool ideas of what, how the world's going to turn out and I think he's a very smart person and I'd just like to chat with somebody who's got that sort of vision okay mm. can I just say that I, I do feel slightly more intimate <laughs> <laughs> do you feel a bit closer? So no, I just feel like I like you guys a little, just a little bit more. All right, now. shut That's up. Just question, question one. Question. <laughs> I mean, we're not going to get through it if he's going to take the piss like that. I mean, <laughs> next question is: Would you like to be famous? And in what way, Paul Taylor? <laughs> uh, would you like to be? Fa- are you famous? Is he famous, Amber, or, or what? I would say he is a little bit famous. Yes, okay. I- I'd say sometimes. Yeah, I'd say Paul qualifies in, as famous in France a little bit. I mean, the only reason I say that is that people stop me in the street and they go, oh, hey, love what you do. I like strangers, you know, who've never met me before. I think that's when you mm. maybe can qualify as somebody yeah. of, in, in the public eye is when people that don't know you come up to you and say hello and thank you and whatever. But people who don't know me come up to me as well. They, they rarely say thank yeah, you. Yeah, they ask you for directions. Usually they they're like, for have money. you got any change? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not today. I think you have to want to be famous, Paul, if you want to be a comedian. Yeah. You can't not want to be. Would you like to be famous in what way? Uh, In the way that I am. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a superstar like Rihanna or Chris Martin or any, or Johnny Depp where I can't go anywhere and have a normal life. I still want to, have be able to have a normal life like get on the subway and the metro I now did, and again to be honest though, it's funny you said it because i did see your career panning out just like rihanna's career <laughs> <laughs> did you i was thinking more beyonce was thinking, for paul, paul paul's clearly the next rihanna oh <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> uh, yeah i'm gonna uh, sing but, a song about umbrellas because it makes sense i'm english it does yeah yeah <laughs> so you'd, you'd you'd like the fame for having done good work basically yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I I totally respect that, yeah. Yeah, rather than just being like showing my ass on Instagram uh, or d- doing vlogs that don't really interest anybody or doing, I don't know, I I feel like the, the yeah, just, uh, I don't know. Yeah. But, but do you not think it would help to, to show your ass on Instagram, Paul? No, I don't have a nice ass. Well, how do you know? Has Instagram judged Instagram it? Instagram hasn't judged it. I think we need you. to let the internet decide. I think Paul. the internet is how your bottom is. We need a belfy. A belfie. It's a, a, a bottom bum selfie. selfie. Yep. Right. A belfie. Yeah. Okay. All right yeah. then. What about you, Amber? Would you like to be famous? Not especially. No. No. All right. Good. Luke, you're, already, you're, you're pretty famous. You're quite famous already with the with the Lepsters. Yeah, but I want to be famous like a ninja. What's the most famous ninja that you that you know? Well, that's so you, it. You I don't, don't know, know any it, do you? ninjas. You don't know it. Exactly. So a ninja fame. Exactly. That's what I want. Stealth fame. The guy, I want uh, to have the fame, but I also Qui Gon Jin. No. What Liam no. Neeson? Yeah, he's the most no, famous on. ninja. He's not a ninja though. What, what did I just say? Quite. It's not. Mike on Jin is is Liam Neeson in Star Wars. Yeah, I'm thinking about Liam Neeson. I am thinking about Liam Neeson, but in Batman. Oh, Ra's Al Ghul. Yeah, he's a, he's the most famous ninja I know. How is that at your fingertips? How is Ra's <laughs> Al? Ghul? I mean, come on. What it's kind Matt, of information? It was on TV, it was on TV is the other day. Stalled. Al, Al, they call him his mates. All right, Al. It's <laughs> Ra's Al Ghul to you. Um. <laughs> Uh, so I'd like to be famous in that sense, like famous, but also unrecognizable, unnoticeable. Mm. Like, you know, Brian Eno, the musician, Brian yes. Eno, he uh, is, you know, one of the one of the most famous musicians going and, you know, did all that amazing work and stuff. And no one knows, who he is, no yeah. one knows what he looks like. Like Banksy. Yeah. Like Banksy, yeah. Like Daft Punk. Yeah, like Daft Punk. They That's just walk around, they can fame. probably get on the metro and just no one cares. As long as they're not wearing their, their helmets. Oh. <laughs> oh, that'd be embarrassing. Oh, shit, I forgot to. You know, oh. like, shit, I forgot to take off the helmet. That's how they speak. Is that it? their new single? <laughs> <laughs> shit, I forgot to take <laughs> off the <laughs> helmet. <laughs> Featuring, like, you know, who would, it, who would, it, who would that feature? Uh, the Stig. Francois Hollande. <laughs> C3PO. And the Stig from Top Gear. And R2D2 on drums. Yeah. Um, um, all right, next question. Okay, next question. That. 
Amber. Oh, yeah. Before making a telephone call, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say? Why? Uh, yes. Normally because it's in French and I'm practicing what I need to say because it's tricksy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I get very stressed out by telephone calls and I, I have to run through the whole thing myself. Do, there was you, a, do you practice in English though? Yes. As well? Yeah. Okay. No, I obviously I have to practice in French. I have to you know, work the whole thing out in advance. But even in English, I'm, I, I get very stressed out by speaking on the telephone. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why. There was a, why is that? Why a, do we get stressed out by the telephone? I don't know. There's a Twitter account. I'm, I'm all about Twitter uh, called Very British Problems. Mm. Twitter. He's all about the Twitter. Uh, have you heard of Very British Problems? I have, no. I have heard of that. Yes, it's very, very good. Very British Problems. Speaking about the phone, there was one the other day which was, the person you have called is not available. Please leave your message after the tone. And you're like, ah, oh, phew, and no. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> it's like, oh, thank God they weren't there and I'm not going to leave a message, forget it. Why are we so, like, scared of speaking on the telephone? What's the matter with us? <laughs> Awkward. Don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I do, yeah, I, same thing. I, yeah. I rehearse, I rehearse mm. the beginning. Like I'm like okay, because this is what I'm going to ask for, and then Rehear- usually yeah, I don't rehearse the whole thing, and then and then it just happens, and then whatever, and then it ends up being fine, it ends up being totally fine. The end though is is often the worst for me. It's like I can't end it. I'm like, well, really That's a great, surprise. thanks, thanks so much. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm um, and they think someone else is coming, and I'm yeah. like, oh shit, I've got nothing. <laughs> um, um, goodbye. <laughs> uh, that's it then. And then they're like, he's a bit weird, isn't he? Nice, my, uh, but a bit weird. My girlfriend does that. She calls me. It just in a day and I only found out recently why like three days ago so after eight years that we're together she calls, she, call, she calls me in the middle of the day and she's like hey and I'm like hi silence because I'm expecting she's called me so I'm expecting yeah. you know, that the only reason she's called me is because she needs to tell me something right. about oh can you go buy some milk can you go do this Could, whatever the, the chore that she's going to make me do is but she just calls me up and she's like hi I'm like hey nothing I'm like and I go so what I thought and that she was- goes oh well, blah, blah, blah. And then I found out recently, she told me like three days ago, she was like, oh no, I'm just calling you up because I just wanted to know how your day was being so far. I was like, oh, why don't you tell me that then? I always just thought that was what? a girl. I don't know if this is outrageously sexist, but I always thought that was a girl thing that like girls like to call you up. Girls Not, do like spending well, time. It's, it's, just, it's just like, hi, and it's like, what? What now? What? What oh, do you oh, want? Nothing. Nothing in particular. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe it's a French thing because, well, no, because <laughs> Nico. This is one of the things that he doesn't like. He travels a lot, and mm. he'll phone me, and I hate talking on the phone. He'll be like, "Oh, hello." I'm like, "Yep, hi, yep." <laughs> what? What is it? And he's uh, like, "Well, you know, I'm in. I've been away for a week." I'm like, "Yep." Who are is you? There who a, is, sorry, who is this? Do you, I mean, is there some reason you're calling me? Because. You're, I mean, you're not dead, me neither. Let's move on, please. I, think I it's hate a talking French on the phone. I think it's just I, English people don't like you. I'd be surprised if he was calling you if he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> but I just hate it. I'm just like, don't phone. <laughs> what, uh, yes, what right. is it? Next <laughs> question. <laughs> okay, well, okay. What would constitute uh. a perfect day for you? You don't have to ask that question in that way, but I like to do that. Perfect day. What would be a perfect day for you? Oh, it's mm. such a perfect day. I'm glad I spent it with you. Yeah, that song wouldn't be played on my perfect no. day. That's the rule number one. That's it. The first thing is I'd wake up to the news that that song had been banned by the BBC. <laughs> Breaking news, perfect day. On this, on Luke's perfect day, bre- the song "Perfect Day" has been banned. Now, I'm, I'm I quite like this song, but not that much. Yeah, a perfect day or a good day. Perfect is too wake, much pressure. I would wake up late. Um, That's it. Just a lion. That's already sounding good to me. Know, Just a big day. lion, because a big lion. Yeah, but I did that yesterday, and I was depressed. I did today. Yesterday was like my first day off in about six months, where I had literally had nothing, no emails to answer, no phone calls to take, nothing. And by the end of it, I wanted to, I wanted to kill. Someone. I was so depressed. I, I was angry and grumpy. I got up at like eleven, and it was just horrible. Really? Yeah, definitely. So that, that I thought that was my perfect day for the last six months. I'm like, I cannot wait until I've got a day off, and I hated it. Ah, uh, even though you had a big lion. Yeah, I would, I would lie in, and then I don't know. Snowboarding. I like snowboarding. Lion and then snowboarding. Lion snowboarding and then or surfing. Okay. I don't know. Snowboarding's cool because it's just I'm in the zone and it's just there's no noise yeah. in the mountain and it's just very cool. It's pretty I good. So it's, it's like exercise. You know, people are like oh I I hate going running but 
Okay. I don't know. So none of your loved ones appear in this day at all? No. None of the people... That Solitary clo- activity. Yeah, I'd be, yeah, I'd be on you, my board. You on your own on yeah. a mountain. Totally. I'd be on my own. Yeah. Okay. While all your friends and family are falling over, unable to keep up with you. Yeah, no, they're not even on the mountain. Right. They're just not there. In another country somewhere. Yeah, yeah. they're just <laughs> not, not there. They're okay. all just for a day. Amber Minogue, per- a perfect day for you. A perfect day. Um... A perfect day would probably be doing something with my family. So Hugo and Nico and maybe some friends, you know, some sort of like lunch or picnic or activity um, where the kids were kept happy and not screaming. So I was like with them, but they were happy doing something on their own. But you didn't need to look after them. I don't need to do anything. With them, but they're like contained within like a glass dome. (laughs) Yeah, a cage, (laughs) if you will. A soundproofed glass chamber. And you're there, you can see them, but you can't hear them, and yeah. they can't see you. Something like that. That's your perfect day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Caging the children. Right, just yeah. put them in a sealed, like, sort of glass <laughs> igloo kind of and thing. And maybe I could get a manicure. <laughs> right, you just sit there and get a manicure. Yeah, sounds okay. great. Or you just get a live video feed of them doing something really fun while you sit and get a manicure. Yeah, have some yeah. drinks with some friends. Okay. Yeah, that sounds yeah. nice. Uh, my my ideal perfect day would be to wake up to the news that perfect day had been banned, <laughs> uh, and 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 then um, I would have some sort of some kind of breakfast. Oh, he's going to get into detail. <laughs> and then I'd go back to bed for another for a little bit of sleep. Yeah, and then get up. Uh, just just every day of my life is my is a perfect day. Oh, there it is. Well, we have pretty good lives. Yeah, to be fair. Yeah. We, we don't really have shit days. That's it. I'd Sometimes just say, I, I don't know, that, that, my answer to that question would, would change depending on whether or not I was on a date again. Like if I was on a date I'd be, and they'd be like, what's your perfect day? I'd be like, well, obviously, you know, um, Hang out with cure you. world hunger and, <laughs> and then uh, just be modest and, you know, maybe clean all the uh, degree uh, certificates I have on the wall. You know, I don't know. Just talking shit. Next question is, when did you last sing to yourself How, or to someone else? Well, moments ago, Luke. You yes. were singing Perfect Day. Just a couple of days. Literally moments ago. That's right. Okay. What yeah. about you two? This morning. Well, uh, same yeah, thing. You, I, sang, I sang with you. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. And before that singing, when did that, when was uh, that last The singing? last time before that was probably in the flat, you know, I just picked the guitar up off the wall and just... Uh, did you? Sang a little song. Uh, I, well, I sang um, Here Comes the Sun to oh, really? Hugo on the way to crash. Here oh. comes the sun. Oh, oh. He likes it. Does he, he really? Sun. Yeah. He's a Beatles fan. <laughs> yep. Good for him. All right. Nice one. Paul, well, just a few moments ago. Just, just all the time. Yeah. Okay. Next, next, next question. question. How have I gone through set one? It if you were able to live to the age of 90 and retain either the mind or the body of a 30-year-old for the last 60 years of your life, which would you want? What? Hold on. If you could live to 90, yeah. but you could stay either looking oh. or thinking like a 30-year-old. Uh, well, I would choose the body because I think that uh, I get the impression that in, mentally I'm, I'm improving, if anything. Uh, I don't mean to jinx myself. I'm touching wood there uh, to maintain my good luck. But I think that mentally I'm doing all right. So I, I, I would... I think that I would like to have a uh, the, the thirty year old body yeah. until I'm ninety, please, and I'll keep my brain as it is. I think my brain's probably not that bad. There you go. Yeah, because even if you even if you if you started developing Alzheimer's or something like you started losing your memory, but you still had the body for it, it means you could wait. You, you go, you you do your like a I don't know, bungee jump, and then you forget about it. So you go bungee jumping the next day, and it's just like a. That's right. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'd prefer having the body. To be honest, I have to take some issue with the question because um, I think they're the same thing. Your mind is based on the quality of your your body, isn't it? Mm. Like if you are in poor health, if you if your brain is is in bad condition, then that affects your mind, doesn't it? Like your brain is just made up of the chemical mm. activity of your your brain, mm. which is a physical thing. So it's the same thing. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, there you go. That's the end of that yeah. question. Yeah, that question. I don't know. I would go with the mind. You'd go with the I'd mind. I'd be much more scared of you know looking old is fine, but losing your mind. It's not just looking old though, is it? It's like being immobile, mm. not being able to like eat properly, not being able to be comfortable. 
not being able, you know, all those problems that you get when you're older, the physical but you can limitations. Be, you can look after your body. You can obviously try to look after your mind, but it's a lot more mysterious. Mm. It is a, it's a tricky one because I do think they're linked as well. But there, there seems to be lots of sort of unknown things that can happen to your mind. Like I'd hate to, lo- you know, like Alzheimer's, for yeah. example. Lily, you know, very is a, it's a physical, it's a physical uh, disease, though, isn't it? But it affects the brain. It, it, it manifests itself in in the workings of the mind. But it's based on physical. But then surely things. everything mental is physical anyway, as yeah, you just said. Exactly. Because even if you've got a mental uh, health issue, then in theory it's physical because your 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 mind isn't is a physical thing. Hmm. Well, it's kind of it, it is a bit of a mystery because psychologists have been trying to work this out for ages, and there's mm. like different differences of opinion on whether or not it's all uh, chemical or whether there are sort of other issues. Like you know, Freud would say that it's uh, the way that we behave and the, our emotional state is based on things that have happened to us when we're young. So, you know, the jury is still out on, mm. uh, on these things. But I, in my experience, people I've seen grow old, mentally, they've been kind of the same person all the way up through the later years. But I've just seen a physical breakdown, a really tragic sort of physical deterioration. And, and yet they're this, the same person in there, yeah. inside this body. You know, so I would choose the body and, and hopefully the mind would look after itself. Hello. You'd make a lot of money. You could sell books on your lifestyle. How right. you manage to say you look so young. Yeah. How to remain young. You eat fit. Shut up. Okay, All right, next question. Next question. Uh, do you have a secret hunch about how you will die? Uh, we need to explain what a hunch is. A feeling. A theory. Like a sort of a prediction of, for the future. Do you have a secret hunch about how you will die? No. No, neither do I. Paul, will it be a, a, a you, no? A but I've got. Accident? I know. I know how I would like to die. Is jumping out of a plane without a parachute? What? That's how you'd like to <laughs> yeah, die. Yeah, that's how I want to go. Yeah, that's not a way to go. Yeah, it is. It's a horrible way to it's go. That's the best it's feeling it's ever. A pretty good way to Have go. Have you parachuted? I've not. I've bungee jumped. Parachot. <laughs> parachot. Parachuted. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Have you parachot? Because it's not shoot. S H O O T. It's C H U T E. So I think it's parachuting. It's what? C-H- shoot. Shoot. Parachute is C-H-U-T-E, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Not is, yeah. S-H-O-O-T. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be parachot, but parachuted, I think. Para- uh, I have para- not. Para- parachat. Parachat. <laughs> <laughs> For shit. It's like pa- Paralympics. Right. Um, um, why? I don't know. I just, I, 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 I've always wanted to, uh, to jump out of an aeroplane anyway. Mm-hmm. But you could have a parachute. Yeah, I'll have a parachute when I first do it, but then I think it would just later. be the yeah. I think it would just be the feeling, the feeling of because you die straight away. There's no messing around. Like it, you'd need to be over somewhere. Some people have survived. Yeah, but there's, they fall into bushes or trees. Like it would have to be like I'd do it over a desert or over the water or something like that. Somewhere where I'm sure that I'm going to die if I You're fall. Like, Wham! And that's the end of Paul Taylor. Just yeah, obliterated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a way to go just the the, the the quickest way possible I think. oh my gosh can i film it yeah <laughs> that'll be the last what the fuck yes the definitely. last episode of what the what fuck, the fuck ah, <laughs> that's horrible i don't know it's pretty exciting like i'd i'd quite like to go in in some dramatic fashion rather than just wasting away or dying in your sleep or something mm. like you know witnessing the earth get hit by yeah. a massive moon's sized uh that ast- film? asteroid uh deep what, impact deep impact or the one with bruce willis oh that with, one with that awful Armaged- woman you know what she called Liv- kirsten dunst eh? kirsten dunst you know isn't it the you know the film where they at the end it's the impact that huge impact deep impact <laughs> with uh, Morgan Freeman as president no, and Elijah no. Wood. No, 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 no. Um, it, I think it might have two awful women. You know, I think isn't that isn't it the Gus L- Lars von Trier? Oh, film? Gu- uh, Lars von Trier. Yeah, the um, I know the one you mean. Yeah, twenty twelve. It's about the end of the world. Yeah. Um, and they they the day, watched the impact the day before yesterday. No, no, no. It's the day it's after a, tomorrow. It's much more arty art house okay. type stuff. Than the, that. Day the, day the day before yesterday. The day before yesterday. It's the day after tomorrow. But anyway, <laughs> I was close. <laughs> <laughs> Melancholia. That's it. Okay. That's it. All right. Oh, all okay. right then. All right. Let's move on. Name three things you and your partner. Uh, appear to have in common. Why have they got appear to have in common? Because well, you never know. Because we don't. We never know. Oh, you mean the thing, the, the, the person that we're speaking to, the person to. you're talking to. Three yeah, yeah. things you got in, appear to have in common. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't know, yeah. like... Uh, oh, this is complicated, there's three of us, but... Three of us. Well, we're English. We nine things, do we? Or was that Let's 12? think of three. 12, 12 Let's just think of 15, three. Three 15, things. 15 things? No, because it's three things that we have in common, so the things are in so, common. What, 18 things? No. Three. <laughs> three, just three. Three, but there's three of us. So no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah but, but if it's got... three and there's two, they're all in common. So in theory, if we're all English, that's one thing that we each have. And that's three. One plus one plus one. No, it's not. It's not three things. That's one thing. A second thing. But if it's three, one thing three times, that's, that's no. three, isn't it? No. <laughs> no, because it's just one thing. <sighs> Name three things that, we've, that the three of us have got in common. Three things one that we're the English. three of us have got in common. Oh, I see. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You're not serious. I'm just taking he's a piss. Taking, he's so wicked. Um, we like comedy. We like comedy. We like we're English in, comedians in we're, France. We're There's English. three things done. Bam. We're comedians. We, we live, live in, in France. France. That, we all have those in common. Must okay. Right, next, much. next. For what in your life do you feel most grateful? What do you feel most for? What oh. for? Like the way they've put a preposition at the beginning of the question. For what in your life do you feel most grateful? Or what in your life do you feel most grateful for? Mm. Taylor, me. Yeah. You start. Minogue. My family. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. I feel most grateful for. <laughs> He's looking for something. I was going to say my PlayStation 3, but uh, <laughs> I bought that for myself, so it's fine. Now, obviously, it's all my, my loved ones, all the people in my life that, uh, you know, mean so much to me my family, my beautiful wife. My, and um, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. I mean, you can't ask for much more. Your health. Your health. Health yes. and, and the right people around you. And the rest of it's just, uh, you know. Well, it does help if you're not in Syria or somewhere like that yeah. as well. Yeah. Because you can have health and loved ones, but be in imminent danger. Well, that's not really health then, is it? I mean, that's... It could still be healthy. Well, health at the same time, health kind of almost is in your hands-ish. If, no. you're born, if you're born with normal health and you live like your childhood through normal health, it's very difficult for your health not to be... I don't know, because some Things stuff... Can you, you can some, get hit by a bus. Some stuff just happens. Yeah, you just yeah. that's true. You just catch stuff. Yeah, you get yeah. cancer and that's just not your fault. Yeah, not fair enough. Fault. Yeah. All, right, enough. Then. All right, fine. Or depression. Me, same thing. Do you reckon if you were in a date right now and you'd gone through this many questions, would you already be like sleeping with the person? <laughs> Do you think you would have got... You'd be like, what are you grateful for? That you're in my bed right now, love. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could change anything about the way you were raised, what would it be? Ooh. I'd say I'd not let my son play with matches and knives, Me. resulting in your scars ah. and near-death experiences. Yeah, if I was yeah, Paul Taylor. some stories to tell, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, no. I, uh, what was the thing? If, if you could change anything about the way you were raised... Uh, it's where you were brought up by so you your see, parents. This, isn't, uh, this is like a step into the intimacy. Yeah, a little bit. We've moved into a slightly sensitive zone here. Do you, f- do you feel like you... On one side, there's a couple of things. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, you know, there's things where like I would have appreciated... Like I look at people who've, who've kind of lived in the same place all their life or they've got like a, a set of friends that they've always had growing up and they, they, yeah. they go back to or they're still there. I'm very envious of that kind of like really close family... Um, mm-hmm feeling which i've never had because my family hated each other um and so uh you know even my mum and her family like don't get on my dad and his family don't get on so i I've, i never really had this idea of family because I, I i i you know up until the age of nine i was with my parents but then my parents split up and i was with my mum for a bit then i was with my dad for a bit and then i've been on my own since 20 since 18 uh so yeah i think that the the sense of family it's not really through choice though so I, I you know i can't say that but having said that all of those experiences have led to why i do what i do and who i am now yeah. so i wouldn't i wouldn't change yeah. anything i i i live the same life because i'm happy where i am now and, and that's all as a result of the consequences of the decisions that were made by other people and myself throughout that period so i you know i, I might not be a funny you know i might not be as funny if i had if i didn't have any struggles growing up i don't know yeah yeah, I kind of agree with that. I tend to, when you have these questions about like, what do you regret or what would you have changed about your past? I think it's, you know, not very wise to start trying to imagine you had a different upbringing because ultimately that's just another way of saying that you're not happy with the way you are now, right? Mm. Mm. Uh, so I agree with you, Paul. That I just wouldn't really change anything because, um, you know, I'm basically all right as far as I'm concerned. I'm quite happy with what I've got. Yeah. So I, don't, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. 
Amber? As far as I can remember. Uh, my sister and I have become close now that we're grown up, but I think when we were young, we weren't very mm. supportive of each other. I think there was this sort of quite unhealthy environment. I think, I mean, and I don't know why that was, but that's something I think is a shame, you know, spend all that time not really being When very did you guys start becoming close? That's not <laughs> the way you were raised though, is it? That's just what well, you did when you were younger. I don't know, because, you know, there's that sort of, I don't know. I think it was something about how we were raised so and just, there was a lot of side taking, you know, my parents are like yours, you know, they yeah. split up and there was this kind of, yeah. you know, when people start taking sides and dividing and all that, that sort of, it all gets very complicated. Mm. Um, so yeah, we kind of got closer after I moved to Paris, like well into my twenties. Okay. All right. So it, you would have preferred it a little bit if, yeah. if, if it hadn't been about taking sides when you were younger and you could have sort of, yeah, uh, g- been a bit closer, a bit younger. Close, closer to your sister from earlier on. Yeah. Yeah, okay. If you could wake up tomorrow having gained any one quality or ability, what would it be? Oh, I like that. I know yeah, that one. Good, I would gain <clears throat> invisibility. <laughs> okay. And and in the and, and in, in the, the realm world. of possibility? Oh. What, invisibility is not possible? Sadly not. Clo- a cloaking device or, or something? That's just Harry Potter. If I could wake up tomorrow having gained one quality or ability... Um, I think it would be to be to, to make more effective use of my time Ooh, yeah. to be able to really squeeze out every bit of juice from the day because mm. as it is I feel like I spend a lot of time I'm very inefficient <laughs> and, I, and I do lots of procrastinating and I don't know how you feel like you're doing that just, without with all the stuff that you're doing I know but I still feel like that yeah. I still feel like I constantly am sitting around not doing enough yeah uh. and I feel like I waste so much time mm. So that's what I would change. I'd like to be more what proactive or more yeah. or less more more efficient. Yeah, yeah, more efficient. Yes, yeah. please. Uh, I think I would like to be less. I'd be I, I, to be more um, confident <clears throat> in general and less awkward in situations. It's funny like I, I, a friend of mine invited me to a to a thing. Um, one of his friends runs the like the 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 Casio G Shock watch store. And he invited me out to like one of their events that, that's happening next week. And, you know, you get it's like you get free drink and food and they give you a watch and whatever. Like it's it's one of those. Not bad. Um, yeah, it's one of those kind of like social events, you know, that, that be, like a art gallery opening or something like yeah, that. Yeah. And I was like, are you going? Because I can't go on my own. Like I could never yeah. go to a place like that and feel yeah. feel normal. Yeah. And I wish I could just show up and just be like, yeah, it's me, Paul Taylor. Like, hey, how's it going? My name's Paul. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks. You know, and just be just like be able to live in that kind of. A house party mm. thing without being awkward and yeah. uh you know when it, but you know it's it, it's it th- what's weird is that kind of non capacity i have of being comfortable is now bleeding into like i'm just the example i use now is like when people come up to me in the streets and like oh i really like what you do whatever i get really awkward and really shy and really timid whereas before in life it would be the same sort of thing but just in different scenarios you know like in yeah. house parties or wherever it was i can't i'm incapable of operating as a normal human it's funny that because i haven't seen much evidence of of that kind of awkwardness Paul's, i suppose mm. we're friends you know there's no yeah, need I, to I be s- awkward no but not with us but i see mm. him interacting with other people i'm like he seems fine like, perfectly no. fine it's interesting because 36 questions intimacy we don't think of paul in any way as sort of socially awkward or mm. ill at ease so it's kind of revealing to, oh, to yeah definitely it's uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, and it's weird because and when I used to work at Apple, people were like, well, hold on, for your for your job, you stand up in front of people and deliver training sessions, and for a hobby, you get in front of people and try and make them laugh. Like, there's no way you can be shy, and it was like a different. Like, I I, tr- I, I really thought about it a lot, and I figured out what the specific thing was, and it's if it's if the uh, if the the oh le résultat attendu. I don't even know how you say that in uh, the, the, the if it's the expected result that I get up in front of people and do something, then I'm fine with that. But it's when I, it's not me specifically. If I go to a house party, it's no one's waiting for me to, to, to be sociable. You know, they're right. just waiting for me, whatever. And so at a house party, I'm very awkward. Like I say hello, but it's just, I have this really awkward English thing where I don't know who to say hi to. I don't really know how it works. Like it's yeah. just, I'm very awkward. And I think, um, a lot of English people are like that. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just it's it's really I hate it so much because I, I I know that I can be sociable and I can be not awkward, but I just don't know how to do it in real life. It's very interesting that that uh, performance for you is kind of easier because it's a very defined role. Mm. 
you know the role the social role in a performance is like so much easier to fulfill it's like basically i stand up and i talk and i make you laugh yeah so much easier to know where the rules are yeah. than i'm standing in this group of people and should i be trying to make them laugh or yeah should you know i don't know quite where i stand is it my turn to talk or should i be listening now and watch things should i yeah, remember yeah. and stuff it's so much more complicated to just be in a group of people talking uh compared to being on stage yeah. where it's well and the, the, it's a really good example actually is like if 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 people come to watch my show they've bought tickets to my show and i go on stage that's fine but if we're like if there's seven of us around the table and we're talking about something and somebody goes oh paul tell us that story about the time that you went to whatever then i suddenly close in i'm like oh i don't want to talk like mm, it's weird yeah, that all these yeah, people yeah. are looking because i i don't know why i've got no idea why and that's even mm. before doing stand-up like even you know mm. uh I, I get on stage and I tell a story in, and, and there's a hundred people watching me listening to the story but when there's seven people and one person because it's not no one's it's not the expected thing that I but if yeah. somebody's just gone oh what was that funny story about when you went to wherever and I'm and, like oh and like five people in the room are like we don't really want to hear the yeah. story mm. or, or whatever yeah yeah interesting that's anyway that was a long answer to say that I the ability no, or the, the, the quality is that I would like to be less uh, timid yeah. Okay. What about you, Amber Binogue? Oh, decision making. I can't make decisions. It's you really hard. You said you had it. You were straight away. You were like, oh, I know. Decision making. As, so- as soon as. Because I already thought about oh, this. Decision making. I can't make decisions. I hate it. I'm. Oh, really that's bad what you want to get better. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you were trying to decide what the quality no. would be. No, I, th- I, 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 I was surprised because I thought you'd chosen decision making immediately. It's like, what's oh. the one thing you'd choose uh, to gain? Uh, decision making. I can't make decisions. Well, you seem to make that one fairly quickly. <laughs> I, ca- I can't. It's so hard. Um, but I'd really thought about it. Oh, okay. okay. Um, While we were waffling on, she was thinking. Yeah, you weren't waffling. Okay. If a crystal ball could tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, what would you want to know? I've asked, I've, I've dealt with some of these questions before on this podcast. Yeah, I've ah. done some of these before. So, wait a minute. If a crystal ball could tell you what? About yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, or, what would you want to know? Or anything else. Yeah. So I, this the crystal lottery ball, results. it can tell me anything else at yeah. all. Yeah, I want to know the lottery results, please. Uh, I, no, it's a bit boring. I want to know why the universe exists. I want to know sort of if, if there is a reason. I want to know the whole mystery of like uh, how the universe started and if it's possible to explain why, then why, and how big is it? And just what? Well, what is you it? might What's not understand go- the answer. I think yeah. that's a dangerous question to ask. Okay. It's like when I asked about whom, I found myself getting very confused. Right. I regretted it. So maybe I should ask, like, where are all my other socks? Exactly. Something where more the, useful. Where, where do, do they go? Scale the question down a bit, <laughs> yes. and just be like, actually, can you just to help me find where my socks go? How do I cut an avocado without cutting myself? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag avocado. What hand. about you two? Would you ask something in particular? So the glass ball? I suppose I'd want to know about the future because I'm invested in it. It's not for myself, but for my son, I'd want to know, is it going to be okay? Or is but, it just going to be a fireball of misery? But if you learnt that it was a fireball of misery and then like within 20 years, it would be like, you know, the, the Matrix, you know, just sort of like... Uh, I'd get a shotgun and I'd give us a whole family suicide. You'd blow everyone's brains out with a shotgun. No, but I suppose if you know about the future, maybe God. you could work towards um, improving it. So if you know that it's going to be at a post-apocalyptic wasteland... Could start stocking you, up. You could start stocking up and you could teach little Hugo some knife-wielding skills. Zombie sort of moves. Right. How to kill the zombies. Yeah, like you know, destroy <laughs> the brain or remove the head. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Paul? Um, uh, what year is the Earth going to end? You want to know that? Yeah. yeah. Well, how would that help? Because what I would do then is I would um, uh, I would cryogenically freeze myself until like a year before that date, and and just see what the world is like just before it ends. Probably a zombie wasteland. How do we know? Is it included in your your information how the world ends? Um, it ask, could be. You could ask a double question like how and when will the world end? Yeah. And the crystal ball will be like, I'm sorry, your answer is not permitted. You know, I don't <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. that's a tough one. I think it's best not to know these things. Not what really does Siri say about the end of the world? Does Siri have an yes. answer? Hey, Siri, what's the question you want to ask? When does the world, when's the world going to end? Oh. Hey, Siri, when's the world going to end? Well, Unix 32-bit time overflows on the 19th of January 2038. Maybe then. 
<laughs> she doesn't really know. She's you not sure she's hedging. Bit time. You know what what was, says, hey Siri, what's the meaning of life? All evidence to date suggests it's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Siri. I like the way you've uh, oh. given an ironic response to that question. Yeah. Um, right, what's Is the ne- Siri funnier in different languages? Like if you asked the same question to French Siri, yeah. would he... Would he or she say chocolate because yeah, that's a bit they, of a sarky comment. Yeah. Is that because it's British Siri? I think so. Yeah. Evidence just all right. What's the meaning of life? Uh, look, I'll, I'll I'll change it to change French. it to French do, Siri do, do and see what, what French Siri on, says. Well, because you know, see if he's less sarky. So you're, this is a this is a little case study about the sense of humour. And Siri. you're saying that if French Siri doesn't give a funny answer, then it means that uh, what? It just means they don't use humour as much as we do. Yeah, yeah, it's about the place. Of yeah, humor. come on then, let's go. Quel est le sens de la vie? Toutes les preuves à ce jour semblent indiquer que c'est le chocolat. Ah, voilà. Oh. They got, so it's the, the same. same thing. What about Spanish? Uh, Can you do that one? ¿Cuál es el sentido de la vida? Vida, fuerza o actividad interna sustancial, mediante la que obra el ser que la posee. Supongo que eso me incluye a mí. All right. Okay. Ooh. What was the answer? What did, what it's, it's basically, it, it's literally the what it actually is. It's like the the the, the force or uh, internal activity of a of a of a thing um, that possesses life. Uh, and then at the end, Taking. it's like I suppose that you mean me as well. Taking. Spanish Spanish Siri is like Spanish spelling. It's just taking it literally, like yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, but yeah. it's uh, yeah. They have real people. Uh, well, uh, they have real people that aren't that ask that right that write the questions and. I obviously know one of them because when I go, hey Siri, teach me to beatbox. Here's one I've been practicing boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots. Really? So this is your this is your doing, isn't it? Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. Paul, you need to explain. You've got to explain this. Yeah, so uh, about two years ago, uh, I made a series of videos called Taylor's Top Tips. Um, and they were stupid videos, and one of them was how to beatbox. Uh, because I found a thing uh, that you, um, if you uh, if you say the word boots and cats over and over again, but you don't uh, you don't use your vocal cords. So instead of saying boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats, you just go boots and cats and boots and cats. It's exactly. And so I made this video with my two cats and their boots, and this was the video. And their boots. Here's what you'll need to beatbox. Some boots and cats. Boots and cats and 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 so obviously somebody I know that works at Apple saw that video and then because what they do is they invite a bunch of people every year or every six months to the headquarters to write some funny answers for some of the questions because there are some really funny questions you can ask Siri uh, and the answers are back so there's real people that answer so I guess somebody saw that and they were like oh I'm going to have that as a question and then they sent it to me like hey Paul ask Siri what beatboxing is All right. anyway I like that I like that one of Siri how How do we get on to it doesn't matter how how are the intimacy levels Uh, Uh, they're they're normal for now (laughs) they're normal situation normal Uh, next question is is there something that you've dreamed of doing for a long time and why haven't you done it oh that's is there anything that you've been dreaming of doing Amber (laughs) <laughs> I can't and, even say it. And why haven't you done it yet? I can't even say it. Amber Minogue. I've been trying to do a podcast and I am and I have nearly done it. But technology is getting better for me. But this week, this week, it will it's be launching. done. It's going to oh, fucking... Oh, it's, it's finally happening. It's going to launch and this week. It's going to launch this week. I this promise. Week. I promise. You've the already... podcast you've I've all been waiting it. for. Yeah. I know. I've promised it many times. And uh, you've got a... Uh, I've got a website. You've got a base of loyal provider. listeners already there. I can't on a, wait. On a I plate know. for you, Amber. They're all waiting. Like, just, when is her podcast going to come? I know. Lots of... Not... Lots of people have contacted me, but two people have contacted me, and I'm sure it's from your podcast, asking me. And that was Steve, who was asking... I said, you know, I can't work it out. Steve Kunake... How do you say it? Kunake, I don't know. Steve, and he was asking me if I needed any help. I, t- I confided in him about the, the problems. And Rebecca, she called me. She sent me a little message asking if everything was going okay. Where is it? They were both demanding to know. So Rebecca and Steve, it's coming. Promise. Okay. <laughs> this right. week. When you type in Amber Minogue podcast into Google Images, this is what you get. <laughs> a picture it's of... It's a picture of the three of us on your podcast. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, yep. 
Let's move on. What is the greatest? Accom- oh, you didn't answer that. <laughs> oh, I no. didn't answer that. Well, it's the same thing, you know. I've been dreaming of doing this, um, this, uh, some of my other Business. courses and things. Oh, and you haven't done it. Uh, yet, and yeah. I haven't done that yet. But you know, um, uh, other things I've dreamed of doing. Um, let's see. What have I really dreamed of doing? I think I've done most of the things I've really wanted to do. To That's be cool. I mean, you know, obviously there's still loads more to do, but uh, I think I've done a, a lot of the things I've always wanted to do. I'd like to do. Uh, you know, stand up on a some big stage somewhere, but you know, I've done a little bit of that as well. Mm. So no, I'm, I'm I, I just want to get all my work accomplished. Just want to accomplish my work projects and get the sort of get some success under my belt, please. Mm. Yeah, Paul, do you have an answer to this? Um, well, I kind of did the thing, the switching job, because that's I dreamt yeah. of doing stand up and. Kind of yeah. made that a, a reality. I've always wanted to make a film, mm. uh, not necessarily act in it, but or, or or do something where I'm, you know, I don't know where it's like the the, the project, uh, whether it's a TV show or a film or whatever. But to be, you know, to direct it basically, to to direct a, yeah. a, a film or, yeah. or a TV show. So, mm. well, it's, mm. you can still do. Uh, that. Still time for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next question is a bit of a big one. It says, "What's the greatest accomplishment of your life?" Oh, can't be bothered with that. Let's move on. What What do you value most in a friendship? Just, uh, uh, you know, free tea. The tea making skills. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. If you don't have a good friend that makes a good cup of tea, then he's not a good friend at all. Tea making skills. That's it. Definitely. Okay. Next. <laughs> what is your most treasured memory? Oof! No. Skip. Skip. <laughs> What's your most? Ter- I like. I like how as soon as we're getting intimate now, it's like no. As English people, we cannot do this. <laughs> terrible memory. What's your Ooh. most terrible memory? Oh, let's not go back there. Oh, let's not go back. Oh to that. no, that's horrible. But, uh, look, we've got to we've got to finish this in <laughs> ten minutes. We've got ten minutes left. Okay. Skip to the end. If, then. Skip if to you the- knew that in one year you would die suddenly, would you change anything about the way you're living now? Why? Yes, of course I would. I'd become a lot more sort of communicative in terms of my emotions. I'd be telling everyone. Uh, exactly how I felt about them. I'd be really boring. <laughs> I'd become really boring and awful. Nico, you know, Amber, I just wanted to tell you that you know we really respect. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 I really like your glasses. Thank you. And, uh, so great of you to say so, Paul. I really like your glasses as well, and I just really love everything you've done with what the fuck France. I really like it. I, I, you know, you know I'd become to a awful party, and boring. And um, he said, "I'm too old to do things I don't like. I'm not going." Because there was just some friends that great. were That's really a, boring, I, and I was like, "That is added. brilliant." I that. Yeah, I yeah. would just, I would, I would pack up and travel. Yeah, go around traveling. Yeah, yeah I reckon. I've pack got, up, yeah, travel. I, I, I think I've got uh, 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 probably enough in the bank to last me one year of traveling. Not in five star hotels, but just yeah. I, I want to see the world before I die. You know, you know, there's, you know, the, there's a lot of queuing involved in that. <laughs> Well, in, in travel yeah traveling around Queuing the world the airport. And people are always like I'm going to travel around the world you mean you're going to stand in an airport a lot of the time yeah you could road trip around I would not travel I hate traveling but um could road trip so you're going to sit in one position in an uncomfortable American car who is it uh, uh, is it Jerry Seinfeld I think very funny joke where he's like yeah basically all life is is finding a different chair yeah. to sit on yeah, like right. you, you, sit you, in this chair and then you could go out and you can sit in another chair is just you know just going from one chair to another chair yeah, your whole life is just going from one chair to another you go to work you're sitting on another chair then you go home you're sitting on a chair we're going to go out for a movie well we're going to go sit in another chair <laughs> yeah <it's laughs> going just, out for dinner sitting in another chair it was just like a whole existential thing of just sitting in chairs <laughs> what's the deal with sitting in chairs <laughs> Alright, next question. Right. Okay. Are we nearly through this yet? I don't know. No, there's three segments, I think. Oh I no. Know. What does friendship mean to you? Oh. Uh, I've already established that. It's okay, a that's tea, tea. Making, tea making ability. Okay. Get, get into the next section. We're in the pink section. Keep what? going. Family. How no. do you feel about your relationship with your, your mother? Ooh, oh, no one should know about that. Oh, sure. Okay, set two complete. We're in green. This okay. is looking better. Continue set three. Make three true we statements for each. For in, I think we don't f- care about each other yeah. enough. We both in the, we're both feeling in the need uh, of a cup of tea. Complete this sentence. I wish I had someone with whom I could share. Like no, I don't. I honestly, I don't have, wish I had someone with whom I could share anything. Like if I've got some biscuits, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to share them. I want to eat them all. <laughs> Bottle uh, of wine. Bottle of wine. Okay. Yeah. No. no, I was going to say no. I don't oh, want to yeah, share yeah. that. <laughs> okay, share. Okay, 
this is embarrassing. When did you last cry? I cried just the In other day of another at, an, at, at an advert. I'm ashamed to say oh, yeah? an advert, was and I had real advert? tears welling up into my eyes. I didn't even put the sound on. It was on Facebook, and it was enough to what, set me off. I've become advert? very emotional. What was the advert for? I don't know because I didn't put the sound on. It was like a rugby team must in have been Japan. An, must have been an awful product it if, it, if it made you cry. Oh God! Oh, that's... Uh, I remember. Yeah, I remember crying at an advert. <laughs> Adverts make me cry, and I'm embarrassed that I'm so Adverts fucking make cheap. Adverts make me cry because I feel sad at the extent to which capitalist society is infringing on my daily life. I want that to is that, be the is reason. Is that the Im- immediate thing that you're that you're that you're thinking? Yeah, I'm just like, oh God, why do I have to have these adverts? I don't want to buy a car. <laughs> Mm, they are bad adverts Kyle. sometimes the thing is it's embarrassing adverts are so good but they're Some awful them, yeah. but they're great yeah mm. when did you cry uh, the last time I cried in front of another person as well it's what it says or oh, by yourself oh. it says as well, well I, went, ooh. I don't know mm. it's a difficult one well, it's probably when uh, Addie's grandmother passed away which was in March last year mm. March last year you've not had a cry for a year you haven't cried mm. for about 14 months are you made of stone no i just i doesn't uh, i i think i've become very emotionally cold over the years of moving house and changing friends and all that kind of stuff i don't think there's there's not a lot that but like adverts or videos and things like that can can make me go yeah okay mm. I, for me it's films going to the cinema i i do mm. like a little cry in the Oof. cinema yes i i do I, you know if it's a decent film if it really gets me then, doesn't uh, even need to be a decent then film. It's not a proper cinema experience unless, you know, a yeah. little tear, a li- unless you start welling yeah. up at some moment. Every time I watch The Pursuit of Happiness, uh, um, it's, I'm like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Finished. Yeah. Um, Buxton often asks that question, is there a, a song that always makes you cry? Oh, ah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a song that makes you There's cry? There's a number of songs that make me cry. One of them is is from the Blade Runner soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that the sort of saxophone song in the Blade Runner soundtrack, which you don't know, but it's just immensely sort of, uh, I don't know how to describe it really. It's just like this aching kind of existential, I don't know how to explain it really, but mm. it's, it's, it instantly reduces me to, to tears. Well, not instantly, but it does make me cry. Yeah. And other stuff is some David Bowie songs, weirdly enough, mm. like um, uh, Ashes to Ashes gets me. You know the one? Yeah. I can't explain it, but that always mm. seems to get me somehow. What about you? Oh, lots of songs make me cry, but there's nothing particular that I could ever pinpoint. Yeah. I cry very easily. Mm. Paul? Songs, songs. that make me cry, yeah. Um, there was one, uh, not anymore, but there was a period when I, it was just when I, uh, when I left uh, Spain when I was like 16 and I n- never really got a chance to say bye to anyone because it was just like, I think, oh, you're not going back to Spain anymore. Oh, really? Okay. And it was a song that... So what, now, now you hear like what sort of... No, it wasn't even Spanish songs. No, it was Nora Jones. Um, uh, don't know why I didn't come. I don't know what the... Don't know why. I think it's a, t- a title of the... Uh, but yeah, it was just one of those. It was a song that, I don't know, we listened to. I listened to with one of my, uh, like my roommate when I was sharing a room uh, with this Russian guy. Uh, Stanislav <laughs> yeah, Bullshit I don't believe uh, That was his favourite phrase really? <laughs> uh, And this is what makes you cry you think Paul it's... you drink like pussy Yeah it was um, it, That was it Yeah I don't know It was just one of those songs That just hit off an emotion uh, There's a couple of Coldplay songs As well that do that uh, mm. For me okay. so, yeah. yeah There's no accounting for it really Is there It's just It's important to have a cry though Oh yeah It's a very good way of getting Getting things off your chest Yeah We've got three minutes. What if anything Ugh. is too serious to be joked about? Boring. What if anything is too serious to be joked about? Nothing. I think oh, I don't know. Anything. I think you can joke about anything, really. Yeah, it's yeah. just how you go about it. I might it. not laugh, but you can do it. Yeah. 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 If you were to die this evening with no opportunity to communicate with anyone... Oh, no, let's anyone, move on. What would you regret? You no, I don't death. regret anything. Your house containing everything you own catches fire no. after saving your loved ones and pets. No. Final what your, what, dash. What your house catches fire and you what, can save one thing. You can save there's, one there's item. Got, there's got to be a positive thing in there. We don't want to finish I'd on. Save um, if my house caught fire. The picture of the queen. S- uh, maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd I'd save um, the uh, the pack of digestive biscuits that I've got in the cupboard. Great. Hobnobs. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's that one. Oh. oh. Death. death. It's all about death now. Yeah. Oh, let's move on. Section three complete. 
<laughs> oh, this is the last one. This staring one. into your partner's eyes for four minutes. Okay, let's do that. So and this then we'll end the podcast <laughs> on just staring into each other's <laughs> so eyes. So this yeah. is the last thing. You know, the eyes are the window to the soul. Oh, that's it. That's the last thing. That's the last thing. Stare into your partner's eyes for up to four minutes. Oh. Up to four minutes. If, I, if you can, if you can, I'm not surprised this works because if you can stare into someone's eyes for up to four minutes, then you're almost obliged to have sex with them af- afterwards, aren't you? <laughs> How awkward would it are be the, not legally, to? Those are the rules. The, the, the eye staring might last longer than the sex. Hey. Depending on how excited you are. <laughs> okay, well, listeners, I wonder if you feel like, uh, you know, that you've got to know us a little bit, maybe even loved us, even more than you already did. Is that I think possible? they love us less. You think so, probably? Yeah. yeah I What's that song? So. I love you less and less because of my... <laughs> it's a no. French song Julien Doré I think is the guy oh yeah. I like Julien Doré I such, hate him so much because he seems like such a cock <laughs> I like the way he just seems like such a little ass. a bit like you know what's that actor Roman Juris oh yeah he seems I like, like a real Roman cock. Juris yeah but I like that too it's kind of a style who's Roman Juris he uh, he was in the, the, the Auberge Espagnole the Espanol. and um, the Beat My Heart skit oh yeah yeah and um, he's been in lots of good films oh yeah and some shit ones I know him yeah yeah French actor. Mm. Okay, right. Well, you two, thank you very much for being on another episode of my podcast. I hope that the listeners feel like that they've, you know, got to know us a little bit better and uh, they can go out away and play this game as well. They can, if they're on they a date. Find, yeah. They can find the 36 questions. Maybe they're on a date, they'll ask some of the more intimate questions they that could, we skipped. They could do it on the date or if they are in their like conversation groups where they get together and uh, speak English to each other, they could use the 36 questions yeah. randomly and ask each other them and, you know, get intimate and... Um, get to know each other. Get to know each other. Have exactly. you found the song? I found the I, I Love You Less and Less song. Go on, okay. then. Go on then. It's coming. That's what she said. Baby, I love you less and less Because of what you've done to me Baby, I love you less I cannot stand the way it says done. Yes, that's wrong. Don. Don. And then it's in French, but yeah, he can't pronounce the word done and I cannot stand it. I that thought he said annoying. told. No. And it's done, is it? It's like Christine and the Queens. Heartless. What what do you mean? She can't say it. She a-les. goes, How could you be so a les? How could you be so a les? And it's heartless. Heartless. Yeah. Heartless. Mm, that is yeah. pretty far away, isn't it? It is. You oh. helped write an episode of What the Fuck France with that exact joke in it, and you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Yes, you did. <laughs> Forgotten it all. Good work. Yeah. All, right, all right then. then. All right, listeners. Speak to you too soon, and yep. speak to all the millions of lepsters <sighs> soon as well. All right, you're going to join me in saying goodbye to yeah, everyone. Certainly. Okay. Thanks for listening, everyone. Speak to you again soon. But for now, <laughs> it's just time to say <laughs> goodbye. Bye. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, this is Luke's English podcast. You can't touch this. This is a masterpiece of the English language. All righty then. Just think of the accolades it's received over the years. Wait a minute. Who are you? I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. This is going to be good. Really? Yes. I want to get into it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Luke's English podcast. And this is Britain at its best. Oh, you lucky people! So that was 36 questions that lead to love with Amber and Paul. I wonder how you feel now. Do you feel all intimate and close? I wonder. If you were counting the questions, you'll see that we skipped some of them, but that's our choice, isn't it? I think on balance, we probably did become slightly closer than before, the three of us. There were some particularly revealing moments where Paul was talking about his lack of confidence in social situations, which is a bit of a surprise considering how I often observe him showing no signs, no obvious signs of social awkwardness. Uh, But it just goes to show that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Of course, we didn't take the whole thing completely seriously. For example, at the end... You're supposed to stare into each other's eyes at the end of all the questions for four minutes. But um, we didn't do that because obviously that wouldn't have been particularly interesting for you to listen to. And it's fairly hard to stare into two people's eyes at the same time. Um, But anyway, all the questions are available on the New York Times website. Um, You can just 
in fact you just google 36 questions that lead to love and you'll probably find it so check them out and you can use those questions yourselves uh, in a variety of situations either on a, on a date maybe or with friends or with your language partners or with your language groups and those questions could provide a nice way for you to practice talking about feelings and personal thoughts in English and if you fall in love with someone as a result well that's just a nice bonus isn't it and on the subject of falling in love with things if you've fallen in love with Amber's voice and you're wondering when Amber's podcast is going to come out her podcast about the history of Paris well let me tell you it's still not ready yet and I will announce it on the podcast as soon as it is online okay it takes a long time to get these things ready you know getting your head around the technology writing recording working out how to publish building a website setting up your podcast feed getting it on the itunes store and all that stuff it takes time and it's not as easy as you might think especially when you've got all those other things in your life like amber for example she's looking after her son and doing all the other things um so just hold your horses for a bit uh her podcast is on the way okay and you'll be the first to know about it when it does go online that's the end of this episode don't forget to join the mailing list on my website in the top right hand corner of every page you'll see a little form where you can put your email address in stick your email address in there and then when i upload new content you'll get a a nice discreet email in your inbox with a link that will take you directly to the page where you'll see things like notes bits of transcription Uh, and other little bits and pieces that I share with you and also the comments section where you can take part in conversations chat with other listeners and generally sort of leave your thoughts and feelings about each episode Uh, okay so please uh, please do that it's nice get involved join the fun okay thank you so much for listening to this episode and I'll speak to you again on the podcast soon but for now it's time to say goodbye bye 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 listening to luke's english podcast for more information visit teacherluke.co.uk 